the terror attack in Nairobi Juicy to tell tourists visiting any destination at the coast will be escorted by armed multi-agency team to ensure their safety. Police bosses in the region assured visitors that they will be protected whenever they they leave the hotels to various destinations. Security is beefed up at, at tourist sites and across the borders within neighboring countries. Now, in other matters, Education Cabinet Secretary Amina Mohammed told the National Assembly Education Committee that the ministry has received 1.5 billion shillings from the Treasury and the funds will be dispersed to all secondary schools for infrastructure development. Ms. Mohammed told the committee, chaired by Tinderet MP Paul Meli, that bulk of the money will go, uh, go to sub county and county schools which have been affected by the transition policy. Presented to the committee by Ms. Mohammed, some 31,337 candidates were selected to join national schools, added 28,838 to extra county schools, added 48,215 to county schools, 722,318 to sub county schools, and 1,626 to special needs institutions. Ms. Mohammed said on top of the 22,844 shillings capitation, that all students are entitled to. The ministry will give each student in a day school 6,000 shillings, while those in boarding schools will get 8,000 shillings for infrastructural development. And lastly, we cross to Uganda, where Uganda's president, Yoweri Museveni, has ordered his government not to issue or renew licenses for sports betting firms. David Bahati, who revealed this on behalf of the president, said the directive was issued because of the negative impact the betting craze has had on young people. Mr. Bahati also said President Museveni has also promised to table the bill on qualifications of religious leaders before cabinet for discussion and later consult the clergy. In a speech read for him by Mr. Bahati, the president commended Anglican Kigezi Diocese Bishop George Bagamuhunda and his Catholic counterpart of Kabbalah Diocese, Reverend Kalis Rubaramira, for championing unity among Christians in One more thing, uh, the President Uhuru Kenyatta and uh, the former Premier Raila Odinga called on the nation to be peaceful. Here's the story. Calls for unity dominated speeches during an event to mark the 25th death anniversary of Kenya's first Vice President Ajaramogi Oginga Odinga. Mr. Odinga, the son of the doyen of opposition politics, Oginga Odinga, led guests and family members in a prayer service at Nyamira ECK Church in Bondo, from where they left to the Jaramogi Oginga Odinga Museum to lay a wreath. Among those that attended the ceremony was Mr. Muhoho Kenyatta, the president's younger brother, who also held the handshake, saying that it was the best thing that has ever happened to Kenya. ODM leader Raila Odinga, however, called on the church to pray for the truce deal and peace in the country, saying it is a sure way for development. He later added that his vision with President Uhuru Kenyatta is to unite the country as it was in 1961. The Bondo event comes a day after President Kenyatta and Mr. Odinga attended the funeral of former National Youth Fund Chairman Bruce Othiambo, where similar calls for unity were made.